Hello everyone, it's Jabara here, and welcome to episode 9 of Misconceptions. Africa is a place full of wild animals and seemingly untamed wilderness. In fact, I feel like it's safe to say that here in the West, Africa's animals are more popular than any city, event, place, media, or even human being that hails from the continent, which is unfortunate to say the least. With such a wide array of wild animals of all shapes and sizes and colors, shouldn't we expect most if not a large part of our current domestic animal species to have originated here? And what about the mass extinction of megafauna and the quaternary extinction period? Why did so many large animals die off elsewhere in the world, but not Africa? Were humans in other parts of the world simply just better hunters, or were there other factors at play? Today, we will clear up these misconceptions, as there are several reasons why Africa has a relatively wide variety of animal life, and why there is such a popular belief that no African animals were ever domesticated. So first, let's do the easy one, which is the false notion that Africans never domesticated any animals. The donkey, for example, was domesticated in Northeast Africa as early as 5,000 years ago, and cats are believed to have been domesticated several times in the same region independently, just much earlier as well as in the Near East due to the vast sedentary lifestyles that took hold in the region as early as the year 7500 BCE. It is believed that this dense concentration of human activity and the resulting filth would have attracted rodents and birds, much like it does in the present day actually, which would have also attracted wild cats to these areas for the plentiful source of food. The guinea fowl is a domesticated animal from sub-Saharan Africa, and though it's not known when it was domesticated, it was known in ancient Greece since the year 400 BCE. Other animals that entered Africa from other parts of the world have been present on the continent for several millennia, with the oldest known remains of domestic sheep, for example, dating back to over 9,000 years ago. Despite some of these animals not really being initially domesticated in Africa, the selective breeding giving them the immunity and hardiness to resist African climate and diseases is an entirely different feat in and of itself. African cattle, for example, experienced so much selective breeding over the millennia that they are very distinct from Eurasian breeds. So much so, that it's not fully known by geneticists if they were independently domesticated or not. This fact is especially evident when early war trekkers could not keep their European breeds of livestock alive in southern Africa, while local breeds of the Bantu people thrived. African cattle breeds among many animals such as dogs and chickens all tend to follow the same model and is thus important to keep a focus on African mastery of these animals on their continent rather than where the species originated thousands of years ago. This is the same trend followed by most of Europe's animals as a matter of fact. Just as with African livestock, they have their origins in the Near East. Isolated instances of taming have also contributed to the misconception of African domestication. Hannibal, among other great conquerors of the past, are known to have utilized elephants for warfare. This is often cited as proof that African people simply lack the intuition necessary to master their own animals. However, there are two important reasons why this is false. The first reason being that black Africans actually did indeed utilize elephants for warfare, or more specifically, the people of the Kingdom of Kush. Secondly, these elephants were most likely either imported from Asia, which has an indigenous population of a much smaller and more docile species, or the North African elephant, also known as the Atlas elephant, which has been extinct since Roman times, and was even smaller than the Asian elephant. The sub-Saharan African species of elephant would not only be too large and cumbersome to transport across the Sahara, but also most likely be too dangerous and aggressive to tame. This is why the Asian elephant is typically used for circuses and movies, like the ones used in the 1937 live-action Tarzan movie, which was just an Asian elephant with large fake ears attached to it to make it look like an African elephant. Europeans attempted to domesticate the zebra all throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, with one notable example being the zebra cavalry used by the Germans in 1911. But we'll talk about that more later. It wasn't just foreign peoples who took advantage of wild animals either. The king of the Benin Empire that once existed in what is now modern day Nigeria would regularly be seen parading around his court with tamed leopards on leashes. Despite all of these instances, the fact remains that all of these animals were tamed from the wild and not domesticated. And that's because some animals just 
can't be domesticated. And I'd even go as far as to say that most can't. Jared Diamond, author of Guns, Germs, and Steel, states that out of over 100 possible candidates for large animals, only 14 have ever been domesticated, and nearly all of them come from the Near East. He also states that strict criteria is required for domestication, such as short growth periods, high fertility rates, calm temperament, and a relative tolerance of human presence. Very few animals have all of these traits, and thus are unable to be domesticated. The difficulty domesticating African animals rests almost exclusively in the temperament category, with African animals typically exhibiting more anxiety, aggression, and paranoia than their counterparts in other parts of the world, as covered earlier when comparing African and Asian elephants. Scientists have demonstrated that even when born, raised, and bred in captivity, this pattern remains consistent, confirming that these characteristics are innate from a genetic level, and it is thus theorized that these behaviors are a response to human presence. With Africa being the birthplace of mankind, many of today's species have evolved alongside us. Animals that were not aggressive or easily spooked quickly succumbed to early human hunters and eventually fell extinct. Those that did manage to remain were able to do so because of how they reacted to human presence with a sharp fight or flight response. This rule even reverses on occasion with African wildcats, for example, being easily domesticated, but European wildcats being impossible to domesticate, despite their similarities. In the overwhelming majority of cases, however, it's the other way around, with African animals being the ones that cannot be domesticated. A classic example being horses and zebras. Zebras display extreme aggression, panic under the slightest amount of pressure, and are unpredictable by nature. They have even been known to attack humans. And unlike horses, once they bite, they do not let go. Like, at all. They can even kill a human with a single kick. They also hold the title of being responsible for more injuries to zookeepers than any other animal. That's right, more than lions, tigers, cheetahs, and other large predatory animals. In fact, the differences between horses and zebras are more than just behavioral, but also biological. For example, zebras demonstrate peripheral vision that is far superior to that of horses, allowing them to see a wider range of the surroundings and thus are incredibly difficult to catch or tame let alone domesticate. Even lions have been shown to get spooked to the point of abandoning their kill from the mere sound of a calm and neutral human voice, which goes hand in hand with the tradition of saying, hey bear, when trekking through the woods. The sound of a human voice will scare away any potential predators. Other animals like the dodo bird did not fare very well because of their lack of fear of man when they first arrived. A similar process would have most likely taken place when early man first began populating the other continents. In Africa, reactions of extreme aggression, evasion of humans, and heightened senses are a direct result of millions of years of evolution alongside humans and earlier hominids, with natural selection favoring animals that express these traits. Those that lacked them were more likely to be killed by humans and thus wiped from the gene pool. Oh yeah, and just to clear something up, Africa actually did experience a mass extinction during the Quaternary event too with several species dying off at the same time as mammoths and other megafauna did elsewhere. Just as with other historical references, Africa simply doesn't receive as much attention. Human overhunting was more than likely just one of multiple factors that led to this event, and there is no definitive consensus as to why it happened. Anyway, back on topic. If the species was not completely wiped out, the survivors were the ones with the genetic and behavioral advantages necessary to survive. Africa also hosts countless species of non-human predators as well, which certainly contributed to this trend of animal behavior in an already relatively harsh environment. This can be observed outside of Africa too. Deer, for example, run very, very, very far away from humans and have even evolved to duck and dodge arrows through pure reflex the moment they hear the sound of a bow release. We humans kill adult animals at 14 times the rate seen in the wild, and we even kill predatory species up to 9 times more often than they kill each other. Animals like wildcats have never really been a target for humans, and thus their fear of us is restricted to just a quick flee while viewing us from afar, yet at a still relatively close distance. Animals like birds, fish, and large mammals will get as far away from the human as they possibly can. To present, Africa continues to host the world's most aggressive animals, with hippos being responsible for more deaths per year out of any other mammal on Earth, despite their deceptive appearance of being gentle, lazy, and slow creatures. After hippos are African elephants and African lions. With rapid human population growth, 
climate change, and modern firearms, Africa's animal species are now declining at an alarming rate. Perhaps with the rapid growth and development and subsequent stability of African nations, better measures will be taken to protect the diverse animals that evolved alongside our ancestors in the past. Thanks for watching guys, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.